my little dark-eyed violet, you are golden-hearted. Your sweet gaze I carry with me, ere when we are parted. I have nurtured faithfully the garden that I tended. From the shore I carry water when the day has ended. I will get some violets to share them with another. And I know the pretty flowers shall delight my mother. For the gentle care you gave me all my days caressing. Oh, my dearest mother, may the Lord grant you his blessing. Hi, welcome to this Mother's Day worship service. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Let us begin with Thanksgiving for Baptism. Joined to Christ with waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parch, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still water. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To your given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us now join in singing our gathering hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart. All else to me save that thou art Thou my best thought both by day and by night Waking or sleeping thy presence my light Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word I ever with thee and thou with me my soul's shelter and thou my heart's hour. Praise thou me heavenward, O power of my God. Riches I heed not, nor vain empty praise. Thou my inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only the first in my heart, great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. Light of my soul after victory won, may I reach heaven's joys, O heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite all the children and so minded, please. Have a, have a good place to sit and listen and join in. It would seem that all of us have someone in our lives who mothers us in some way. To mother a person is to nurture or to take care of a person. That person could be a mother, a father, or someone else. Have you given the person who mothers you a hug today? If that person is far away, far away from you today, then you can send a hug through a conversation on the phone or even by email or text or Skype. And that's very important right now with this physical distance, especially when it's even harder to get together. So use those modern methods, all that digital stuff, to send a hug and a kiss to those special people. Well, if you haven't already given that hug, make sure you do that before the day is over, because today is a, best, a very special day, Mother's Day. Well, I knew or know that all well, you knew that already. But did you know that the Bible has a lot to say about mothers? You see, God has a very special place in God's heart for mothers. In fact, God made a promise to the children who love and honor their mother and father. Here's what the Bible says. Honor your mother and father so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. That's from Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Those people who mother us do a lot of things for us during our lives. Some of those things we will never know about. What is something your mother 
or a person who mothers you has done for you. Think about that. Let's all pray together. Dear God, thank you for mothers and those who mother us. We are thankful that they are always prepared to help their children and to lead them in the right path. And thanks for Jesus. Amen. And now we'll hear the readings for the day. Our reading comes from Acts 7, verses 55 to 60. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus, standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The reading is from 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure, spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, through rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. For those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show, me, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. So today, mothers have received flowers, phone calls, and love, and hopefully even a breakfast. However, there is a lot more to the role of a mother than, mother than that. I know mothers tend to worry about their children, young and old, regardless of age, wondering how they are doing and praying that they would find happiness and joy in their lives. Mother's love is unconditional. That's with God too. 
God's love is unconditional and has no boundaries. God's love accepts and loves even if we do not deserve it. Jesus sees each of us as a unique and special, regardless what stage of life we are in. And in today's gospel text, Jesus knows that the times the disciples were at, that they were all at, were very challenging times. And so he begins with words intended to bring comfort. Do not let your hearts be troubled. However, their hearts are troubled, very troubled. So they ask questions. And you see, that is what we do. We ask questions when we are struggling to make sense of things or, or feel overwhelmed by our circumstances. Why is this happening? Who is doing this? Why did she or he have to die so young? Why is the coronavirus happening right now? Why is it here? How come we cannot go see our friends and families and get together? What is going to happen after all of this? What? Why? Where? We ask questions. So the disciples' questions were quite, quite, quite similar, and they have similar sadness in them. When Jesus said, you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas replied quite blunt, uh, bluntly, Lord, we do not even know where you are going. How can we know the way? And when Jesus suggests that he is the way and the truth and the life, and that anyone who knows him will know the Father, Philip also kind of, gets confused and doesn't know what to say. So he says even more boldly, show us the Father. So Jesus answers, have you been with me so long and still do not know me? Jesus seems a bit frustrated. I would think, what do you think? So Thomas and Philip ask questions about what Jesus is saying, like, where are you going? Can we see the Father? And behind both of these questions seems to be a more, um, more deep question. Why? Why are you leaving? Why can't we go along? What, why is this happening? So, in response, Jesus offers not so much an answer as he offers himself. Why is an important question. It gives voice to our deep need to understand, to kind of comprehend, to make sense. But it's also often quite difficult, even impossible to answer. So instead of answering the why question, Jesus answers the question of who. He is the one who loves them. He is the one they have known and can trust and who will do what they ask and provide them what they need. Sometimes we want answers even as what we really need is relationship. Whatever our question, whatever our doubts, whatever the unknowns, Jesus still made himself available to us. Jesus still offers himself to us, inviting us into a relationship that may not answer all our questions, but ultimately exceeds them. Martin Luther's sense of the real presence of Christ in the Lord's Supper seems to explain this well. What we experience in the Lord's Supper, Luther believed, is just that kind of real presence. It is a confession of faith that does not boil down very easily to clean-cut answers, 
but instead offers a relationship. It is really God who is really present for us as we really are in the way we can really receive. I think there is something similar going on here. Whatever the disciples may ask, Jesus will keep offering not simply an answer, but himself. Because as important as why is, who is even more important? For we live and die and are born once again in the in and through our relationships. Amen. Let us join in the singing hymn of the day, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, what comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives, who once was dead. He lives, my ever-living head. He lives, triumphant from the grave. He lives, eternally to save. He lives, exalted, throned above. He lives, to rule his church in love. He lives to grant me rich supply. He lives to guide me with his eye. He lives to comfort me when faint. He lives to hear my soul's complaint. He lives to silence all my fears. He lives to wipe away my tears. He lives to calm my troubled heart. He lives all blessings to impart. He lives to bless me with his love. He lives to plead for me above. He lives my hungry soul to feed. He lives to help me in time of need. He lives, my kind, wise, heavenly friend. He lives and loves me to the end. He lives and while he lives I'll sing. He lives, my prophet, priest, and king. He lives and grants me daily breath. He lives and I shall conquer death. He lives my mansion to prepare. He lives to bring me safely there. He lives a glory to his name. He lives my Savior still the same. What joy this blessed assurance gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. As God's beloved children, let us pray that the light of Christ shine on the nations, the church, and all those in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our healer, show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil 
and burdened with illness and fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make us vigilant, attentive, and proactive in the eradication of all diseases, malaria, dengue, HIV, and AIDS, and others that creating suffering and often result in death for many people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only when the virus threatens us. Open ways beyond timidity and fear that to easily ignore our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession, caregivers, nurses, attendants, doctors, all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, closed borders, and other restrictions. Protect and guard all those who must travel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of the nations that they speak the truth. Halt the spread of misinformation and act with justice so that all your family may know healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal our world, heal our bodies, strengthen our hearts and our minds, and in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for those whom we na name in our hearts, or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold in your gentle embrace all who have died and who will die this day. Comfort their loved ones in their despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember all your family, the entire human race, and all your creation in your love. Receive our prayers and hopes. God of grace and mercy, we entrust all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, light of the nations, salvation of the world, Lord of us all. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us, pray, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us now join in the singing, the sending hymn for all the faithful women. Thank you. 
for all the faithful women who served in days of old. To you shall thanks be given to all their story told. They served with strength and gladness in tasks your wisdom gave. To you their lives bore witness, proclaimed your power to save. O God, for saints and servants, those named and those unknown, in whom through all the ages your light of glory shone. We offer glad thanksgiving and fervent prayer we raise that faithful in your service our lives may sing your praise. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to God the Spirit, who binds the church as one. With saints who went before us, with saints who witness still, we sing glad alleluias and strive to do your will. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Stay safe. Look after each other. Phone friends, family, keep in touch. Bye-bye.